Okay, so the natural next place for us to go would be, of course, the anterior pituitary, because we just released seven different hormones that are actually going directly through the anterior pituitary. But let's look at this anatomy a little bit more before we go any further. First off, remember that your pituitary gland, physiologically, is really two separate things. The posterior pituitary is really nervous tissue and it's extension of the hypothalamus. Um, and then the anterior pituitary is glandular tissue. Interestingly, embryonically, these derive entirely differently. Um, the posterior pituitary, actually, before the cella turcica was there, um, the posterior pituitary actually moved down from your brain development, but the anterior pituitary, before the bone was fully formed, moved up from the roof of your mouth. And so they're actually like sitting right next to one another and everybody thinks that they are um, identical twins, but they're at best roommates right next to one another. They're regulated entirely differently. Importantly, that means that with fizz, you can't just say pituitary. You have to say anterior or posterior pituitary. They do have some fancier, longer names. The whole pituitary, as I mentioned before, is called the hypophysis, hypophysis, and they consider it the master gland. Well, but because they didn't know that the hypothalamus is actually controlling it. So the hypothalamus is actually the puppet master of the master. Um, so the anterior pituitary, though, that glandular tissue, um, the long fancy name for it is adenohypophysis, which means gland pituitary. And then not surprisingly, even though we won't do it right here, the, name, the long name for the posterior pituitary is neurohypophysis, which means nervous pituitary, because one of them's gland, one of them's part of the nervous system. So what I want to do in this video is go through the um, anatomy a little bit, and then the six hormones that you guys are responsible for that come from the anterior pituitary. So again, the hypothalamus is connected to the anterior pituitary by this weird little blood vessel called a portal vessel. And um, you learned about portal vessels um, in the like hepatic portal system. It's this weird exception to the cardiovascular system rule. Usually cardiovascular system rule goes, goes heart, arteries, arterioles, capillary bed, venules, veins, heart, right? But with a portal vessel, what happens is you put two capillary beds in series with the portal vessel between them. So it goes heart, arteries, arterioles, capillary bed, portal vessel, second capillary bed, venules, veins, heart, okay? The objective here is everything that I made here is going here anyway. And if I don't dump it into general circulation, I can get away with making a lot less of it. Not that one, this one. So um, this portal vessel shunts all seven of those hormones we just learned directly from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. And again, this is called the HPA axis. This portal vessel is either called the hypophysial portal vessel or the hypothalamo-pituitary portal vessel. And if you want to watch an animation that goes through the HPA axis, you can actually watch this one. It's like 11 minutes long, so I'm not going to play it during the lecture video, but it's pretty good. I mean, it's a little boring, but it's actually got some good information in it. Okay, so um, where we are is right here now. And what we saw here is that this, um, the hypothalamus released, released seven different hormones that either caused or inhibited the secretion of hormones from the anterior pituitary. And so now what we need to do is look at those hormones, and that's these six right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are actually more, but we don't understand what they do very well, so just these six are the ones you're going to learn. So um, the anterior pituitary secretes six different hormones, and the reason it's always been considered um, the master gland is because four of these go other places to cause like other cells to release other hormones. So they're like, oh, well, the anterior pituitary is kind of controlling the endocrine system, but then they didn't realize that the hypothalamus was actually controlling the anterior pituitary. So let's look at these hormones. Um, so we've got FSH right here and LH. Um, FSH first. FSH is considered a gonadotropin because it's going to the gonads. And the only thing I don't like about this figure is that it's kind of implying that FSH and LH do the same thing, but they don't. Okay, so listen so that you'll write it down correctly. FSH causes the gonads, 
ovaries, testes, to develop gametes, right? Uh, ova um, and sperm, or eggs and sperm, okay? So what this does, FSH, follicle stimulating hor hormone, is there's a big developing structure that will develop around um, a um, gamete that's about to either be ovulated or complete its development if it's a spermatozoa. And it's called a follicle. And what this um, FSH does is stimulates the maturation of the follicle. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's follicle stimulating hormone. It will cause, <coughs> excuse me, oogenesis in the female and spermatogenesis in the male. Cool? <coughs> um, this hormone right here um, is also a gonadotropin, um, but it does something different. It does go to the gonads, actually goes to different cells in the gonads. And what it does is this, this is what it does. It makes the male secrete androgens, including testosterone, those, those, all those male-like hormones. And it makes the female secrete estrogens, um, including estrogens and therefore pro progesterone. Progesterone is different than estrogens, but you need estrogen to um, produce it. So to simplify, FSH causes oogenesis and spermatogenesis, and LH causes sex hormone secretion, okay? All right, um, growth hormone is next. Growth hormone does a hell of a lot, so I'm gonna oversimplify it here. Growth hormone goes almost everywhere in the body, so it sells throughout the body, and special function at the liver. I don't ask you a ton about the liver, but I will talk about it just a little bit. And primarily to oversimplify, what growth hormone does is it causes cells to go through protein synthesis, which is a good way to do growth, and um, cell division, protein synthesis and cell division. In the liver, even though I don't usually ask about this, it causes the liver to make growth factors that help su support the growth of other things. So cells throughout the body, cell division and uh, protein synthesis is probably fine, although you will figure out later in your career that it does more than that. Okay, um, ACTH, I'll just do this one now. Um, adrenocorticotropic hormone is what it stands for. ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. The name is telling you where it's going. It's going to the adrenal cortex, yes? So it's going to go to the adrenal cortex. We will see later that what it primarily does is causes the secretion of a hormone called cortisol, okay? Um, TSH, <clears throat> also called thyrotropin. Um, TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, and that or the word thyrotropin will tell you that it's going to the thyroid, and what it's going to do is cause the thyroid gland to secrete hormones. Um, it says TH here, but really that's the other thing I don't like about this diagram. It's really T3 and T4 that it makes it secrete. It's not all thyroid hormones, it's really just those two. Okay, and then Last but not least is prolactin, and the name doesn't tell you where it's going, but it sure as hell implies it. So it's, it's prolactation, that its primary target is the breast, although guys make it too, so maybe we don't know everything that it does, but prolactin goes to the breast. Okay, so let's look here. The chemical class of hormones, all six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, they are all peptides, okay, no exceptions. And so what you will eventually need to be able to do is to make a chain that connects the hypothalamus hormone that causes the anterior pituitary hormone. And if there's a next one, you will do that. But I'll do the first few with you. You're not quite ready yet to do it. So um, you should be able to now fill in the columns here um, entitled hormones released, abbreviation, alternate name, example, major target, effect for all six of these, okay? So you're gonna take all six of these anterior pituitary hormones, you're gonna put them here. If there's an alternate hormone released in its abbreviation, if there's an alternate name, you're gonna put it there. The chemical class of hormone for all of them is peptides. The target is, you're seeing the targets here, that's the targets. And then the effect are the things that we've been talking about, right? And so sometimes your effect may change a little bit when you're like, oh, okay. But FSH was in males, 
spermatogenesis. In females, causes oogenesis. LH was in males, causes the secretion of androgens. In females, causes the secretion of estrogen and um, progesterone. Okay? So, um, and then I'll do some disorders about these in the next video.